So sometimes when we running a business, we might think we are hitting the block. We we're hitting the block that is impossible. We're hitting that that zone when we think it is impossible for me to make in my business. It is impossible for me uh, to land customers. My niche is not right. Like we are focusing on what is not possible for us. But however. If we keep our, like, if we walk by faith, if we walk by faith, because sometimes our eyes see absolutely skewed reality. It comes to your origin story, people, again, people want to see their transformation through your story. And their transformation through your story. Another very important factor, very important when in uh, telling your story and uh, really uh, crafting your origin story is your why. Because people people deeply connect with your why, people deeply connecting with your uh, uh, with your reasons why you are, why you are selling your services. Why are you serving? Because selling is serving, and every serving has a reason. Every serving has a mission. Every entrepreneur has a mission. And really, when you tell your story, when you go forward and you tell your story, you show your why behind what you're selling. And also, we all know about no like and trust factor, right? So no like and trust factor is when uh, you... Um, like when when really people get to know you on a very deep level, right? And when you are sharing your origin story, and listen, when I say sharing your to share your origin story, I uh, you can share your origin story many times through different angles, right? And but like the most important part of your origin story, the most important part is sharing your. Uh, transformation in the way that your customer, that your prospect can see you, can see their transformation through your transformation. So uh, this is what we're going to start with. Uh, we're going to start with origin story. And uh, I'm going to like, what a better way to show your origin story than actually tell you my origin story tell you how I got here, who I am, where I'm from. So also, I don't think I ever shared the story before online. And listen, I'm a little bit nervous, right? So, but let's go ahead and get started. So who am I? And what qualifies me to really sit in front of you and tell you about how to get more clients, how to run your business, how to implement the strategy that is that are working right now uh, in the market. So let me tell you about myself and my origin story. So um, my name is Eugene Berezin. I am a, a business coach. I'm a career coach. And uh Today, I, I'm going to tell you how I started my business, what worked in my business, what didn't work in my business, and how I got there. So how I got here. So my first career, like when it comes to my career, right, overall, like my very first job, my very first job was a sign, like Russian sign language interpreter. So I was born and raised in Russia, in Moscow, and my first, well, my first um, job was a sign language interpreter. Well, actually, I lied. My first job was uh, so. It was like it was my final year in high school, and uh, I got my cell phone, my first cell phone. And my mom said, "Hey, I'm not paying your bill. You got to get a job because if you want to have a phone, you got to get a job. It's way too expensive. I'm not paying for that, so you got to pay for that." So. I got a job uh, like to uh, place those little ads on the at the bus stop. I don't know if you if in your neighborhood you have like a local store, maybe a corner store, and that corner store has a board when like members of the community, people who shop there, they would post 
their requests or maybe a little ads about their services. So I was doing something like that. I was placing those little ads on, on the bus stops. And I was fired literally like probably two weeks after. And I, I was told that my ads, what I'm placing is not working like any, is not working as well, uh, is not working uh, and there are no sales. And honestly, that was the first lie that I heard about myself. The first lie that I heard about myself that what I uh, the promotion that I put for other businesses won't sell and won't work. In fact, I had sales, but something didn't work out. But it redirected me to another uh, career trajectory. And my first job was a sign language interpreter. Uh, in fact, I know two sign languages: Russian sign language and American sign language. Um, and uh, my uh, after that, after I uh, got into college, I become a therapist. I become a clinical psychologist. And um, after that, after I graduated the college, after I uh, started my career, I decided that I wanted to move to another country, and I moved to Chicago, which. I want to tell I want to tell you about a little bit. I'm going to tell you about that a little bit later. And um, long story short, I got a job as a software engineer. And after that, I started my coaching business. But let's start from the beginning. So this is my great grandma. This is me in Moscow, Russia, in our apartment. And why am I telling you that? Because a lot of people, a lot of people think that we all, we, uh, and a lot of people are looking for uh, mentors, right? But like, in fact, we, uh, we, get, uh, we uh, have mentors throughout our lives. And that was uh, my great grandma and my grandma were first mentors in my life. And my great grandma taught me kindness taught me understanding, taught me how to be gentle, taught me how to listen to people, and taught me how to be understanding. So that was my, if I had to pick my first mentor in my life, that's prob that was probably my great grandma. So, uh, and this is my mom. She's retired. She's a military woman. And uh, my mom was also my mentor. And when I learned from my mom, I probably learn discipline and I learn like really to stick with the plan to follow my passion. And really also it's interesting because we have such a really deep relationship with my mom because I mentor my mom and my mom provides me feedback as well. So, and uh, this is my grandma, my mom's mom mother, ma, <laughs> and this is my grandma. And she taught me humor. She was a very straightforward person. So my uh, my great grandma, she was more so like kind, uh, like really nurturing. My mom always wanted to show me the world, that the world is a better place and stuff like that. But my grandma, she was a very straightforward person. And she pretty much would be like, you know what? Like, that's BS. That's not working. And she has, she, she was really quick. And I don't know, she's also, uh, she was also a military woman. But I honestly think she missed out big time on a stand-up comedian uh, career because when she transitioned, when she passed away, I, because we never really die, she, when she passed away on her funeral, uh, we really, a lot of people will really remember her as a joyful person, as a funny person. And uh, and like, really, we were remembering her jokes. We were remembering her sayings. It's like, little, little, like, if she was on Twitter today, she would be the most, or on TikTok or, or Instagram, she would be the most popular creator because she would just say like she would just say the craziest stuff out there okay so um and um when i uh like this is like this is the full like, this is the my first career as i said was um sign language interpreter and um 
how it's related to entrepreneurship, y'all. How it is related to entrepreneurship. So I want to I want to bring I want to bring us home a little bit because when I started doing sign language interpreting, I started doing freelancing. I started doing freelancing because when I started, like my first instinct, my first intuitive action was like really to go and sign up at the agency for sign language interpreters so I can get private clients. So it's it's like a bootstrap agency in a way. So I had entrepreneurial mind back, back then, but they didn't take me the first time. They said, I don't have experience. They said, I'm not qualified. They said that I won't, that I won't be able to do that. And what I did back in the day, I'm dating myself. Back in the day, uh, you could put an ad in a local newspaper and people would call you about services. And this is exactly what I did. I put an ad, like, listen, I knew back then, I knew nothing about ad. I knew nothing about how to advertise my services. I knew nothing about how to put myself out there. I literally just put a short sentence that I'm a sign language interpreter. This is the service I provide. And I literally started my first freelance business. And this is how I landed my first job offer. So the my my first job offer. So uh that was uh that was at a local uh university. And I I was I was literally a few months from graduating high school and I was looking for a job because you know, like remember I had to I, I had to pay my phone bill. But uh, I couldn't take the job right away, so they they hired me as a contractor, as a freelancer. So I would work only a few hours a month um, interpreting the most important lectures, and um, and that was that was my first professional. That was my first professional job, and not to mention after that, after that, I like every single emergency department knew my phone number knew me like by name i literally would like and uh, what whenever something would happen somebody would need to go to a doctor like emergency department police department uh lawyers judges uh individual clients who needed a sign language interpreter like as soon as possible they would get in touch with me i wish i knew a strategy I wish I knew how, like how, how to keep going, because like, I didn't think of myself as an entrepreneur back then. I didn't think of myself as a service provider. I thought, well, that's just a site hustle. Just that's just a site money. But like that was my that was my first entrepreneurial journey. That was my very first entrepreneurial journey. So, uh, and after that, I like uh, I. As I was in college, right, uh, learning uh, clinical psychology, I realized that I need to invest in myself. And this is my first personal development crew. I was studying NLP and I have certification in NLP as an NLP practice, as an NLP master. I have a I have a bunch of certifications because I realize that if I want if I want to make it my career right moving forward I need to invest in myself I need to invest in my personal development so uh, saying that that coaching and investing in myself investing in my education investing in my uh, investing in me like that that was from back from. Uh, back in the day when I was in college and I realized that I don't, I, I'm not getting the necessary knowledge that I, that I have to have to provide high quality service. So, and after that, after I graduated, I did something entirely crazy. This is a picture of me in Chicago. This is my first day in Chicago in 2013. I, I realized that back at home, back in Moscow, that was not the place for me. That was not the place for me. And I wanted something bigger. I had a bigger vision for myself. I had a bigger vision for myself. That's something that I was not qualified for. And uh, how it's relevant to your business, y'all. 
we often think about how we're not qualified. We often think about the impossibility that we're facing with our businesses. Oh, starting business during recession is impossible. Going to college is impossible. And by the way, when I was going to college, that was also not quite possible for me because um, where, like the colleges that I was aiming for, well, like one college that I was aiming for, they said no. And then I decided to shift and pivot. And, the, and, the, and I said, you know what? I'm working anyway. So I'm going to enroll in a program that would uh, allow me to work, allow me practice, have supervision from my professors and practice my craft as I go to school. Because if you ever... If you ever been a new graduate, you know that your degree doesn't give you a job. I had to earn my experience. And by the way, I got a job at my faculty as a sign language interpreter. So I would listen to all the lectures that I have to listen. So two birds, one stone. So I got the education. But like also, I realized that I wanted something more. That I was created for something more and I was not in my right place. So... I moved to Chicago without work visa, without a solid plan. I literally got on the plane. I'm like, okay, I can enter the country and I can figure it out. It was impossible. It was impossible. And speaking of impossibility, but like this is when we talk about impossibility is where your attention goes. I talk probably with... 50 lawyers who said like, listen, man, this is impossible. Have your vacation at the end of your time being here, go back home because it is impossible. But one lawyer decided to bet on me and said, you know what? You have a story. You have a story. And this is, the, listen, when I tell you that the power of storytelling is really powerful, it's not just a business, it's in, it's in your life. And I was able to, I was able to get all necessary paperwork to stay here for another year. And after that year, I was eligible to apply for a green card. And, but when I got here, like sometimes, listen, even in our businesses, even in our businesses, sometimes when we running business we might think we are hitting the block we we're hitting the block that is impossible we're hitting that that zone when we think it is impossible for me to make in my business it is impossible for me uh to land customers my niche is not right like we are focusing on what is not possible for us but however if we keep our like if we work by faith if we walk by faith, because sometimes our eyes see absolutely skewed reality that is not related to our future. Because if I was just, if I was just making decisions based on what I see, I'm like, okay, I, I need to go back. In fact, I had, I, I had two way tickets. I had, I had my ticket back home that I had to cancel and it was a and it was an act of faith. I'm like, you know what? I'm just betting on myself. I don't have enough money to stay here for a long time, but I'm I will make that leap of faith and I will bet on myself. You know, a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of coaches fail because of the lack of faith, because of the lack of leap, because of the lack, uh, because we are so focused on our impossibility that we are missing. We are missing the fact, the fact that when we are in alignment, that the, the path will open for us. And it's exactly what happened to me. That was impossible. Me being here right now, a U.S. citizen already, it was literally in 2013, in August. And back in Chicago, that was impossible. Possible. That was absolutely impossible. So, um, and I did it and I made it. And when people ask me like, but how did you make it? How did you make it work? Uh, I literally 
I literally say like, listen, I don't know. It's like, it must be some sort of miracle and because it is some sort of miracle. And in our businesses, we often, we often, we often think that it's a lack of strategy. It's not the lack of strategy. It's a lack of faith because if you don't have faith, if you don't have confidence, if you don't have courage, nothing is working. So after that, so after I moved here, I switched my, like, I, first of all, I landed my career as a counselor. I, I was working as a youth counselor. I was working as a case manager because my mission impossible, again, like people say, hey, it is impossible for you to go back to your profession. You will, you will never be a therapist. You will never, you will never counsel. You will never work with people. Because like your degree in America, it is like it is it is something that is in, like, in, 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 people don't do that. I did it, but after that, I decided to switch my career to software engineer. Well, like, my first like my first job was um, in tech was a uh, QA engineer, and not only I switched my career, I was teaching others. Like this is me on the at a meetup teaching others how to implement test automation. Spreading, and by the way, another, like this is another hint from the universe, from God and by entrepreneurship, because back then I started mentoring people. I started showing people the way. I started showing people the way. I was literally sitting on the gold mine without realizing it. I was literally sitting on the gold mine without realizing it. I was teaching people how to do test automation. I had my YouTube channel. And by the way, that helped me, that propelled me in my career so much. And this is, and this is why I decided to start up my business. And to, like in, in, 2000, in 2023, I decided to start, it, to start my business because again, uh, experience working uh, as a therapist, as a sign language interpreter, as a software engineer, like making impossible moves, I realized that I have so much potential to create bigger and larger impact. And I started creating impact with my business. And in, in 2023, in twenty, like in twenty twenty two, I had a like I had a big event happen in my life. My family life literally crumbled, and uh, in January I was sitting there reflecting on what happened, reflecting on my next move, and I thought my next move should be creating impact. Bigger, listen, I was not burnt out professional who wanted to get out of corporate. That was not my story. I love my corporate job. Listen, I was enjoying myself back then. I was truly enjoying myself, like teaching people how to make difference, teaching people how to do test automation, teaching people how to bet on themselves, in, like, getting invited to local meetups, conferences, podcast interviews. I had it all. But I like, but I thought I need I needed to create a bigger impact, and I started thinking about how to how to create my business. And here's another impossibility for you: in 2023, it, like, listen, if I if I ever desire, like, if if I think about what would be the worst time to start my business in tech, that would be probably last year. That probably would be like 2023, because if you're not in tech, what was happening in tech, what was happening in tech, a lot of layoffs, and here I am, decided to create my business, coach people how to become leaders, how to rise above, how to bounce back from a layoff, how to land leadership opportunities in the field, in the field that is literally in a way crumbling because listen 
uh, prior, like prior 2023, probably uh, prior 2023, like tech was like uh, tech was be, uh, tech is still very popular, but it was a, it become a very popular profession because you don't need a degree, you don't need the whole lot of like hassle. Like you need to go to a boot camp, you learn the skills, you land a job, and you land six figure job on paper is really easy and a lot of people made it really easy but guess what in 2023 people who got their uh um people who got in tech fairly recently less than 10 years ago they faced with impossible market a lot of software developers got laid off a lot of software developers lost their opportunities and here I was marketing my high ticket coaching program to the industry that is full of fear Full of people who don't know what to do, uh, and my a lot of my first client, a lot of my first coaching clients, they didn't have the whole lot of money, but they decided to bet on themselves. And later on, I realized if I can, if I can serve, because selling is serving. If I can serve and sell high ticket coaching program in the industry that is full of fear, people. Holding, holding to their money to their wallets like as never before because there's a lot of and uh, it's it's there's no guarantee, right? You like you pay high ticket coaching fee, like you pay three thousand dollars for a career coaching program, and you don't know what's going to happen, and you don't have a job. But not only I was able to sell my high ticket coaching program, I was able to deliver great results to my customers and like i have six people on the screen right now but i have way more clients to share their success story their transformation and this is when i decided i need to share that with other entrepreneurs i need i need to share that with other entrepreneurs because i also invested heavily in myself and i was in three well in two coaching programs i work with the three coaches, well, more so four coaches. And what I noticed, a lot of entrepreneurs missing the mark with their messaging, with their content strategy, and with their social selling, so uh, marketing on socials. And I thought like, okay, if I was able to do that in the industry that is full of fear, in the industry that is not like, it's not like, listen, if I landed my business, probably like, prior, like maybe even before the pandemic or like right around that time, that pro, like a lot of coaching um, businesses really grew tremendously during, uh, during 2020. When everybody was on the lockdown, when when nobody uh, could uh, couldn't go anywhere, a lot of businesses were booming back then. And if I started my business back then, I would probably be further ahead, or even before that, because again, coaching business, educational business in tech, highly lucrative market, right? But I decided like, but when I started, when I, when I decided to answer my calling to serve people, to create better and bigger impact, that was the worst possible year. Because guess what? There's never a better time. There's never a better time to start your business. Never a better time. So like, I decided to share that with entrepreneurs and uh, this is like, and this is one of my clients that will share uh, his story on Thursday with us, and this is my another. This is my newer clients also. Like we in my um launch that offer program, that is also a mentor in building his uh mentorship program. I just uh, I decided to teach others, and uh also when I started teaching other entrepreneurs, and again I I'm closer to tech. The, my first clients were, of course, people in tech who would like to build their mentorship program. Cl my clients started implementing the strategy and they start seeing the success. And this is how I started my coaching business. And this is why I had to listen throughout my uh, coaching career, throughout my co coaching career, I had strong 
I have strong desire to help other entrepreneurs to do what I do. To market, to sell, to position themselves in, uh, in, in, in a very powerful way. And um, when I got success in my business, because listen, not only I started my business, when I started my business, what happened, I landed my first client, right? I, I was so happy. I was so excited. But then I'm literally like a few weeks later, I got laid off. Impossible, right? And what do you like? What do I do after that? Well, I decided to bet on my business and I decided to keep creating impact. I'm like, okay, like, what do I do now? I can either go back to corporate, uh, probably refund my client. I'm like, no, I'm not going to do that because my client my client could not find help anywhere else i was i was the like i was i was probably the only coach who could help her who could un, who understood her situation who had the expertise like no i'm not going to refund my client i, I i'm going to run with my client till the end um but also what happened my business started working for me because your business is working right your business is working and um when your business is not working for you, when you when you feel a lot of resistance, when you feel a lot of tra friction in your business, your business is working on you to make you a better entrepreneur, to make you a better business owner who will make it. And when you become that version of yourself, that entrepreneur, that successful entrepreneur, that fully aligned entrepreneur, your business is working for you. And my business started working for me. So I like I started lending, um, uh, I started lending uh, clients, and uh, my my uh, business started working. But now, let's talk about the strategy. What strategy? What factors will affect your business that your business is working for you? versus working on you. Number one is messaging. What is messaging? How you create like the messaging. First of all, you need to know like you need to know what problem you are solving and for who. And tomorrow we're gonna talk more about messaging y'all. Tomorrow we're gonna dive deep uh, uh, more uh, in, uh, about messaging and ma magnetic messaging, magnetic outreach and putting yourself out there. Messaging number two platform. And when it comes to platform, you need to keep two factors in mind. Uh, where your people at, where your avatar is at, is it Facebook, is it LinkedIn, or is it like is it Instagram? I built my business on LinkedIn. I built my business on LinkedIn. And I uh because here's the thing about platform. If I think about software engineers, right? For example, for my coaching business, are software engineers on YouTube? Yes, I have a YouTube channel. And in fact, I here and there I have like I have leads here and there from my YouTube channel. But where people make a buying decision, and for my customers, people make a buying decision on linkedin because a lot of people come to linkedin to get education to get more opportunities to uh, to to get um, uh, perspective to find experts to find other experts so my people make every almost every single client with the exception probably with one or maybe two probably with one my old clients came from linkedin and when it comes to LinkedIn, it's not just having optimized LinkedIn profile. It's your messaging. I started landing like the first, my first prospects, first people who were interested in, people started rising hands before my LinkedIn was fully optimized. And uh, the messaging is your content. Content that is not fluff content that delivers value, content that talks to your customer, content that makes difference for your client. That what makes difference. 
So lead generation. Uh, again, when it comes to messaging and platform, lead generation, I find personally that it was extremely easy to generate new leads, start new conversations on LinkedIn. First of all, majority of the time, I can see what that person is about or if that person is my ideal customer. Because, for example, on other platforms, on YouTube, I can have that conversation. I can have my Calendly link. I can have my social media links. But I, I, I don't have the control. I don't see who is watching my um, content. Even when people leave comments, like that profile doesn't tell me the whole lot about that customer. Does it tell me the whole lot about that person who is behind that uh, that comment? On LinkedIn is different. I see people who interacted with uh, with my content, who reacted on that content, and I can circle back, start conversation. No, LinkedIn is not like LinkedIn is not like get rich quick kind of scheme. Like it's a, it's a process. It's an it's it's a consistency. It's a connection game. It's a building relationship game. But this is where lead generation starts. You start, you start paying attention. And again, when it comes to lead generation, you pay attention to your leads. You pay attention who you attract. You pay attention to the people in your ethos. And lead conversion, lead conversion, again, it's when you establish that no like and trust factor this is exactly why we started today with origin story this is exactly why i when i showed you how to show people the transformation how to help people to see their transformation through your transformation because what is like what is possible for me is possible for you what was possible for me going through impossibility of moving to another country without no rhyme or reason or any qualification criteria that would qualify me to actually safely move here, get a job, and stay here, but literally, literally taking a leap of faith if it's possible for me and it's possible for you to take a leap of faith and create your business. And we're talking about we're, we're talking about leap conversion, right? This is why your origin story matters. This is why your origin story is important. And in fact, if you want to see the difference in your business right now, if you're running a business, you're thinking about business, here's, here's a homework for you. If you're not a part of my private group on LinkedIn, send me a message. I will add you to the group. Your homework is to record your origin story. Short. Sure, you don't have to go long. You don't have to go deep. You don't have to share what you don't want to share, but create your short origin story. Start practicing telling your origin story about your transformation and post it in the group. Listen, it's a private group. It's a private group. You can post it on your, uh, on uh, you can post it on your profile or you can post it in the group and share with me. This is your homework. Share your origin story. And in fact, people who participate in the in my private group and share their origin story. I want to reward you. Like I will give you a Starbucks gift card for your participation, for you getting outside of your comfort zone and telling your origin story. So, messaging, messaging is probably the most important part. Platform and working with the platform, understanding the buying behavior, or not just buying behavior, but also human behavior on that platform. What is important on that platform? how that platform works, and, and more importantly, where people make a buying decision. That's, that's, that's important, link generation and link conversion. Link generation and link conversion. Those, like, those are very important, like, those are very important uh, aspects. And, and tomorrow we're going to talk about the challenger model.
tomorrow tomorrow is we, we're talking about we're going to talk about challenger model and with the challenger model and it, it fits perfectly with shifting people's beliefs strategic like you you strategic you strategically educate people on the platform or, or on the problem you educate people on the problem you make you lead them from this from the stage of unaware of the problem when they become aware of the problem you're uh, taking control taking control in uh is important taking control over sale this is what the book says right but it's more about your leadership how do you lead your people because in order to attract people lead people into like it's like it, uh, your your leadership your leadership is important so uh and leading people to your solution 